Hello, my name is Matthew Cole and I'm a lecturer at the University of Exeter. Now, before I talk about my research, I just want to tell you a story about uh, a time a couple of years ago when I actually have volunteered at a church youth group. And we needed some kind of illustration just about patience to show the children. So what we did is we got a sweet. And we said to them, you can have this sweet, you can take it, you can eat it, and there's no problem, just enjoy it. But if you hold on to the sweet until the end of the session, we'll give you another. So you'll end up with two at the end. Now, the interesting thing was, not so much the illustration, but what one of the children said to me. There's a boy who's about eight years old, and he said to me, you take the sweet, you have it back. Because the thing is, if I hold on to it, I'm going to eat it. And what I really would like is to have those two sweets at the end of the session. Now, the interesting thing is, although that boy didn't realize it, but that simple illustration encapsulated a whole number of issues with economics and law, and it applies to mergers and acquisitions, which is my area of research. You see, classical economics suggests that we're all rational, that we all act in relatively predictable and economically rational ways. So, for example, if I said to you, you can have £300 today, or you can have £305 tomorrow. And then if I said, you can have £300 in a year's time, or you can have £305 in a year and a day's time. Now, according to economics, classical economics, everyone would answer those two questions the same. So either you would say yes to both, uh, for example, wait an extra day, or you would say no to both and always take the earlier date. But the funny thing is, that's not how we are, act. You see, behavioral economics suggests that actually we don't act as classical economics suggests. We tend to have something which is called present bias, among other different kinds of biases. And this suggests that we overemphasize the importance of things that we get now over those things that we might get a bit later. The problem is that can have a very serious impact on our economy. You see, imagine that you are a shareholder in a company. You own shares in a company and someone comes along with a bid to buy that company. They will typically offer you something called a takeover premium, which is where they'll give you more money than the shares are currently worth on the stock market. Now, you can either take that money and sell your shares or you might think to yourself, well, actually, I think this is a very well-run company. Therefore, I'm going to hold on to my shares because I think maybe in three or four years' time, it'll be worth more. The difficulty is you can see how present bias might make people make a bad decision. Instead of thinking, well, that company is going to be worth more in a number of years, so I'll hold on, they overvalue the money that they will have now, and so they take the opportunity to sell their shares, even when, rationally, they shouldn't. And this is a real problem if you're a member of a board that runs a company. Because if you know that's how people behave, then when you're faced with a decision, let's say you've got some revenue, you can do one of two things for it, with it. You might want to invest it to, in the future to make your company more competitive and more productive, or you might want to return that money to shareholders as a dividend. Now, if you know that shareholders overvalue things that they get now, you're going to spend your time trying to return money to shareholders now, and now, and now, and now, and never really focusing enough on investing for the long term. And this, unfortunately, the facts suggest, is a problem that the UK has. We tend to invest less in research and development which of course is something which pays off in the future, than other co uh, countries such as the United States. So what's the answer? What can we do? Well, some people suggest that we can have something called takeover defenses, and some countries do have this. A takeover defense is when the people who run the company, the board members, if there's a takeover offer which is made and they don't like it, they can simply block it. 
and they can say no. It doesn't matter what the shareholders say, we are not allowing this to go ahead. Now, perhaps if we do this, the directors of companies, the boards, will be able to think more about the long term of their company and invest. This is true. But there's a difficulty, there's a trade-off. Just like they will be able to think more about the long term because they can block takeovers, they can also act very selfishly. So, if they wanted to, knowing that they don't have to worry about a takeover where if they're doing a bad job they might be fired after the takeover is completed, they might think, well, I don't have to worry anymore. We've got takeover defences, so what I will do is spend all my time on the golf course and enjoy myself at shareholders' expense. So there's a trade-off. What are we more worried about? Short-term focus or directors who are lazy and difficult to get rid of? So my research, after time spent looking at behavioral economics and classical economics and the law, is to come up with a solution where you remove that trade-off. So my idea is that we reform the law so that boards of directors can go to shareholders and they can say to them, look, we want to invest in the long term on a particular project. Let's imagine there's some machinery that they can invest in which will bring their costs of production down and consequently in a couple of years boost their profits up. And they can say, look, we want to invest in this, but we cannot be guaranteed that you won't just sell your shares if we do that because the profits have gone down. So what we want you to do is to give up uh, or give us the right to use takeover defences for, say, let's say the next four years, if that's how long it would take for the returns to start coming in. The shareholders can then agree or disagree to allowing them to have takeover defences. And this solution takes away the trade-off. You see, it allows the board members to think about the long term, to invest for the long term, to put money into our research and development, into boosting productivity. But at the same time, if they fail to deliver, if they just take that opportunity, use those takeover defences to sit back, relax, and not actually put the effort in, eventually, unlike normal takeover defences, they'll expire. And when they do, then if a takeover offer comes along, the shareholders will be free to take up the offer once again. And in a way, it's just like the boy with the sweet. He knew that if he had the opportunity to eat the sweet, he's probably going to eat it. But what he really wanted was the two sweets. So what we do is we give shareholders the opportunity to give up their right to have the quick return so that they have the opportunity to have a greater return later. So instead of one sweet now, two sweets later. The difference is, however, instead of it being sweets that we get, we get a more productive economy, higher wages, and a more prosperous nation for all of us. Thank you for listening.